Welcome to this comprehensive guide on how to connect a Victron V-Bus inverter charger, such as the Multi Plus or Quattro, to your computer via a COM or communications port within the VE Configure software using an MK3 interface dongle. Once connected, I will guide you through the general interface of VE Configure by running through all the settings and options in the top menu bar. Before continuing with this tutorial video, you'll need to first have Victron V configuration tools downloaded and installed on your Windows computer. From there, you will have to connect the Victron MK3 device between your inverter and computer using a spare USB port as well as a certified UTP cable. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to check out my previous two videos in order to help you get this all done correctly before continuing with this video. With all that said and done, let's now take a deeper look at connecting to and using VE Configure. If you don't already have it running, launch it by double-clicking its icon on your desktop or from your start menu. Upon starting VE Config, a warning message will be displayed. Read the warning carefully as it emphasizes that making changes in the configuration of Victron Energy devices should be done with care, as misconfiguration may lead to damaging the system. Take note that you can also change the language here should you wish to do so. If you understand the risks and feel qualified to proceed, click the OK button to acknowledge the warning and move to the next step. If this is the first time you are connecting the MK3 device, Windows may attempt to install the necessary drivers automatically. Ensure your computer is connected to the internet to facilitate this process. Otherwise, you can download and install the MK3 USB drivers by selecting Special from the top menu bar and clicking on USB drivers. If you have previously used the MK3 device and it's up to date, this will not be required. Now that all drivers and software are up to date, it's time to let the MK3 communicate with VE Config using the correct COM or communications port. To do this, click on Port Selection in the top menu, then hover over COM port. You should now see your MK3's port number listed there. You can also choose Auto Detect if you are not sure. Once done, your computer will be connected and communicating directly to your inverter via the MK3. Alternatively, if you do not have an MK3 USB dongle connected, but still want to be able to play and tinker with the software, you are able to generate a virtual demo simulation of a V-Bus device. To do this, click Port Selection in the top menu. Then choose Fake Target with full options to load a simulated system. This option allows you to explore VE Comfig's capabilities without connecting to actual hardware. A window named Select Voltages for Fake Target will appear. Select the desired DC voltage from either 12, 24 or 48 volts and the AC voltage 120 or 230 volts for the Fake Target that you would like to simulate. Click the OK button to proceed. After selecting either the fake target with your desired specs or your MK3's COM port with your connected VE bus device, you'll be taken to the main screen of VE Configure. You will see that the software is divided into three main sections, with the main navigation menu at the top, the tab settings on the right, as well as the get and send settings buttons on the left. Let's take a look at each of these in more detail. Starting at the top of the window, you'll find the main navigation menu, which includes the file port selection target, defaults, options, special and help menus. Some of these were previously grayed out but have now all become available due to us being connected. By clicking on the file menu gives us the following options. Save settings, which allows you to save the current configuration as a VSC file to your computer. Load settings, allows you to load a previously saved VSC file from your computer. Print settings, lets you print a physical paper copy of the current configuration settings. Export settings. This exports the current settings from the general grid, inverter, charger, virtual switch, and advanced tabs to a text readable format. This allows you to easily copy and paste the data into a Word document on your computer. Alternatively, when you close the window, you will be asked if you would like to save the data as a text file for future reference. Exit. Simply closes VE Configure. We've already used the port selection menu, but for completeness sake, let's quickly run through the provided options again. COM port. This is where you select the communication port that VE Configure will use to connect to the MK3 device. Fake target from file. Allows you to load a simulated device configuration from a VSI, VSC or RVSC file. Fake target with full options. This creates a simulated device with full configuration options for testing using VE Config. 
Next up is the target menu with the following options. Get settings. This command is used to retrieve the current configuration settings directly from the connected VE bus device. Send settings. This command does the opposite and sends the current configuration settings to the connected VE bus device. Show panel. Shows a digital version of the Phoenix multi-control panel. Unless this product is in the system, you will never need to use this feature. Show software version. When clicking this, it will reveal the hex code for your VBUS device, which includes its processor type, model number, and firmware version. This becomes very useful when you want to update the firmware of your connected VBUS device. Nothing special about the defaults menu, as its only option is to reset all the configuration settings to their default values. The options menu has a variety of available options and settings. Check for update now. As mentioned before, this searches for software updates to ensure VE configure is up to date. Scan for available COM ports. This simply scans your computer for all the communication ports currently available to the MK3 USB dongle. Languages. Choose the language in which the VE config interface should be displayed. The default language is English. The color selection provides a color coding scheme to visually distinguish between different states of settings. Set default colors. This simply resets the color settings to the software's default scheme. Unmodified settings. This color represents the settings that have not been changed from their default values. The default black is fine. Modified settings. This does the opposite and shows the color for settings that have been changed, but that don't require the inverter to reboot. I usually leave this as the default orange. Modified settings requiring a reset. This color is very important as it indicates settings that have been changed and will require the inverter to reboot to take effect. This I always change from the default orange to a striking red so that I can clearly see when the inverter will reboot. There is also a message that appears at the bottom of VE config when one of these settings are changed, but this can sometimes go overlooked. So I like to have this color coding help me make sure. Modified settings requiring a password this again highlights settings that have been changed and now require a password to confirm the modification. I generally set this to purple. Modified settings requiring a reset and a password. This points out settings that have been modified and need both a reboot and a password to be applied. I set this to pink to help me differentiate it. The special menu contains all the remaining miscellaneous settings such as USB drivers. As mentioned before, this is where you can click to download the latest USB drivers for the MK3. When clicked, a pop-up menu will appear providing guidance for installing the correct USB drivers depending on the type of connection you have. Note that the program does not install the drivers itself but will create an installer or provide the files needed for the found new hardware assistant in Windows. High speed for MK3. This should always be enabled as it provides high speed data transmission when connected to the MK3. Find item. This can be used to search for a specific setting within VE Configure using its ID value. To determine the ID of a setting, right-click it with the mouse. This menu item will be rarely used, as it's mainly intended for providing support to people working with a different language version of VE Config. Set to simple mode. This feature is designed for quick installations or for users who do not need access to the full range of configuration options. The warning dialog associated with this feature provides important information. Switching to simple mode significantly alters the interface, limiting access to many settings, and only allowing the use of predefined configuration files, ideal for straightforward installations. Keep in mind that this change is irreversible, and in order to regain full functionality, a complete reinstallation of VE config is required. Last but not least is the help menu with the following options. Program help. Access the help files that provide guidance on using the VE configure software. What is this? This aids you by providing you with more information about specific features or settings within VE configure. It's the same as right clicking and selecting what is this? About. This provides all information about the VE configure software version and other relevant details. Having gone through the top menus options and settings, you should now have a much better idea of what VE Config offers, as well as feel more comfortable using it. There is, however, still lots to learn, so make sure to check out my next video where we will take a look at the bottom right section of the software, starting with the General Settings tab. This is where the real power of VE Configure starts to come into play, 
allowing you to set up and make changes to the connected VE bus device. The General tab is where you can adjust general incoming AC settings, such as system frequency, shore limits, dynamic and current limiter, together with the battery monitoring features, so make sure not to miss out on this invaluable information. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you've made it this far, I sincerely hope you have enjoyed the content and learned something new. If so, please leave a like and subscribe if you have, as well as to get notified of any future videos. Oh, and make sure to check out this video as well. You can also subscribe over here. And this one is pretty cool too. Lastly, don't forget to visit the Blue Power Pro forum.